is Recordology. Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. I hope you're having a great day, great evening. Today we're going to take a look at a cool record, but first I wanted to replace the platter mat. I had the rubber, black rubber one on, and um, I just love this light effect that you get with this one. The edges look like it's emitting light. It's actually redirecting light that it gets here, especially right here, and just phew, it's a great effect. It looks really cool. And most of the time it works fine in terms of getting enough adhesion to rotate the record without, you know, needing any extra thing involved. So today we're going to take a look at this record right here. This is super, super cool. This is a Disney Mickey Mouse Club record. Copyright... 1956 Walt Disney Productions. This is record DBR61, a Walt Disney storyteller record, The Littlest Outlaw, as told by Jiminy Cricket, played by Cliff Edwards, orchestra conducted by William Lava. That's the first time I've heard that name. 45 RPM extra play, or extended play, also known as a 45 EP. Originally 98 cents and then marked down or, you know, eventually a dollar. Maybe it was a dollar and then marked down to 98 cents. I don't know. <laughs> but this is a, a story with music that we're going to listen to. We're going to listen to the whole thing. I think it should be fine. And I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. I haven't actually listened to it yet. Uh, if you're wondering what the heck a 45 EP is, we've done shows on this before. But essentially, they, put, they cram more grooves in there so you get more music on a 45 so up to 10 minutes and that this is supposed to be about a 10 minute disc so I won't take up too much of your time uh, talking about the physical record but let us have a look at the disc itself it's on black vinyl I know I wish it was you know something colorful but it's not it's in pristine condition this 45 is in pristine condition it does not well the, the hub is a little bit raised Interesting record, though. I like the label. Very, very cool. Interestingly enough, there's nothing that says side A or side B, except for the A mark at the end of, of the number down there, which is, and also, I guess, right here in the matrix stamp on the uh, run out there is really kind of interesting. These marks right here, too, will tell you. You can look that stuff up and see, you know, where records are pressed and things like that. Okay, enough babbling about the disc. Let's go ahead and give her a play. Try to get that dust off of there and just listen to the record. Enjoy, you guys. Hi, I'm Jiminy. Jiminy Cricket, of course. Now, I guess you know what good jumpers we crickets are. Why, we can hop or skip or flip over anything. Well, most anything. At least over grass and flowers but not over fences and hedges and walls. Oh my no, that takes a much bigger animal, a four-legged animal, a beautiful, wonderful horse. And this is the story of a horse, a very special horse who could jump like a fire in the wind. His name was Conquistador. That's because he lived in Mexico. And every day, this proud and happy horse would jump over fences and hedges and walls. One day, something was wrong. Conquistador was afraid to jump. It wasn't his fault. A bad man named Chato was beating him, trying to make him jump a wall that was too high even for Conquistador. And when a horse is frightened and beaten, he can't help but act up and get in terrible trouble. Well, that's what happened to Conquistador. Until his owner, who didn't know the truth, gave orders to Chato that the horse must be destroyed. Poor Conquistador. Not a friend in the world to understand or to help him. Not a single one except a little boy named Pablito who loved Conquistador.
bleed off? Oh, but how could a little boy rescue a great big horse from... <laughs> Chato had a gun. Why, Conquistador couldn't even run properly. He had hurt his leg. Pablito didn't know what to do. His beautiful friend, the horse, would be shot. But where could they go? But then, at the very last moment, Pablito leaped on his back, and away they went, stumbling and frightened, but as fast as they could. Maybe somehow, somewhere, the two of them would find safety. A horse who could no longer jump like fire in the wind, and a boy who was no longer just a boy, but an outlaw, the littlest outlaw. Have you ever tried to steal a horse? Oh, no, no, of course not. But have you ever tried to hide one or find enough food for it? They're pretty big, and besides, Every time Pablito slowed down to rest or look for anything to eat, there was Chato, always behind them, always coming after them. Once Pablito tried to hide and let Chato just walk on past. Well, Conquistador was only a horse. He didn't know any better. Poor Pablito tried every place he could think of to escape, even the inside of a building. And suddenly, there he was in church with a horse. So, as we reset for side B, amazing fidelity. I mean, this is presumably recorded in the early to mid 50s, and because this, what did this say, 56? Um, where did I see that? Yeah, night. Oh wait, no, wait, later than that. Nineteen. Can't tell if that's fifty-five or sixty-five. What do you guys think? Fifty-six. I think that's fifty-six. Anyway, the fidelity is amazing, just amazing. And again, the record. Well, take a close look here. Look at the module. That's a little dusty, I know. But look beyond that. I mean, the grooves are, themselves are pristine. They still got the polish on them. Really, really cool. By the way, we're listening in stereo. If you hear a louder presence over here on the left, it's because we're a little closer to the left speaker right over here, up on top. The right speaker is about twice as far away. So my apologies for that. But anyway, okay, let's listen to side B, which does need some dusting. And while we're queuing up, I'll go ahead and take care of that. All right, guys, enjoy side B. But the priest in the church was a kind and good man who remembered that God loves all animals, just as he loves all children. And so for a short time, they found refuge. But of course it couldn't last. It's just too hard. It's too hard a job to keep on protecting and hiding a horse forever. And one day, when they were outside, there was an accident. <laughs> a huge bull broke loose from a pen. Conquistador reared and plunged, but Pablito was too small to hold him. Everyone screamed and ran for safety. And when it was all over, Conquistador was nowhere in sight. The horse was lost. Pablito looked every place, in the town, in the country. His new friend, the priest, even helped him look. And while they drove looking, he tried to cheer the boy up. But it did no good. Pablito's heart was broken. And as for the beautiful, wonderful horse, well, at that very moment, Conquistador was... Now can you hear me? Conquistador was at the bullfights. Bullfights? A horse at the bullfights? Well, that's exactly the question Pablito asked when he and the priest learned from a gypsy what had happened. The priest drove as fast as he could drive. For 
he knew that the only horse in the bullfight wears a blindfold. The Picador's horse. Blindfolded. And right in the ring with the bull himself. Of course, the people who had found Conquistador and put him there didn't know he was a special horse, that he could jump over fences and hedges and walls. Well, at least over fences and hedges. And poor Conquistador. He didn't even know what was happening. He couldn't even see the great horns of the bull as the Picador, who enraged the bull, was hurt and thrown from his back. For when Pablito arrived, there was the black bull about to charge the trembling horse, left all alone in the ring. Pablito ran as he never ran before. He jumped down off of the wall and into the ring. He raced for the horse and leaped to his back. He tore off the blindfold. Conquistador sprang forward to carry the boy from danger. But look! The only way was over the wall. And then together they did it. The boy and the horse jumping higher than a horse ever jumped before. Conquistador jumping once more like a fire in the wind. And so Pablito rode the wonderful horse off to safety. I don't just mean he got away from the bull and from Charo either. No, indeed. Because do you know what the owner did when he saw how brave Pablito had been? Why, he gave him Conquistador to be all his own horse. And today, every day, this proud and happy pair go jumping over fences, hedges, and walls, and flowers, and grass. All right, you guys. You know... Do you ever notice that anytime Disney does something, they just go above and beyond? I mean, the quality, compare this to a non-Disney production of the same time frame, and I bet you would be hard-pressed to not decide that this is markedly better. Also, we're looking at a record that's nearly 70 years old, and as you could tell by that, even though we weren't listening to a direct feed, you were listening to a microphone, picking up speakers in a room, even though you were listening in that manner, the fidelity is amazing. It's amazing, 70 years, and we have a piece of plastic with grooves stamped and pressed into it. And it was like we were right there. The fidelity was just phenomenal. So very impressive record. Again, I haven't heard this until tonight, and uh, it was really cool. I liked it. It's kind of like a book and record without the book. It was literally produced, purposely produced just for audio, purposely built, purposely, what am I trying to say? It was made for record. There's, it's not intended to be uh, a book to go with it. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you so much for hanging with me. A little longer show tonight. I appreciate you more than you know. Thank you so much. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so. That's going to do it for tonight, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.